Hello, welcome to the analysis of Buckery. So let's just get into it. Um, so firstly, um, yeah, I don't know how I rank these posters. Uh, you can always, um, in the survey, which is um, linked everywhere, you can always say which poster you like the best. And um, but yeah, I think this one's definitely a good contender. And you know, hints what's happening later on. And yeah, all of these cubes they do have a point. <laughs> and um, uh, yeah, so yeah, it's just um, if I, if anything, it's kind of just um, you know, just it could be like a visual metaphor on how each legion member is on their own case almost, you know, their own problems. And then you have these two you new know, additions to the story as well. And and even despite the the blue in the forefront, the jade green definitely indicates what the next element is like. Um, but yeah, I think there could have been more to do in the background, maybe a natural setting. But uh, anyway, let's actually get going. Yeah, so as mentioned in the previous videos, um, these some of these worlds are made using Autodesk Maya, and um, yeah, so I'm drawn on top of them, and yeah, and I got this result, which is kind of neat. So this is the world of the green apes. Um, they used to have like a almost like a coral red colour um, to their fur, but you know because of the established colour palette, it's just going for this colour instead, which I think it works just as well. I also like you know the Salian instances in these books where you see what the adults and the kids look like. Um, you know, despite the similarities, yeah, I just think that's some nice detail. Even the Rickos here, these Purex-like beings, um, they too used to be red and just do have more detail. But um, in fact, there was a, a version of um, a lot of this story actually where, you know, I've like I've said before with you know, the Legion going from back and forth between members. And Pytron used to be, that used to be a name for a character and his rival used to be uh, what they used to look like. But, you know, now the Pytrons are a race and the Rickos are a race. <laughs> uh, so yeah, another history lesson. But yeah, I kind of like the fighting bits here, and and yeah, I think that kind of hints the theme of independence as well, because you know that's definitely the point. Because you know, Carl is struggling to be on his own. Nicole is reliant on the number of people at the minute, and then you have these two who are separate as well, which you know could hint other bits in the future of this story anyway. And as a bit of context, so these green apes they are part of the world, which you know it's like this whole planet is a galaxy GPS. This is where the source would be at, more so underground, could be picked in better. Uh, but yeah, the Legion do win this fight in the end. And also, I think this book also does well with sticking with the colours of the elements as well, but I could say that too soon. <laughs> Alright, um, yeah, let's get going. Yeah, so, improvement time, yeah, the hologram could a lot better, probably with names on as well, and yeah, you can't really tell which one's which, but one thing for sure is that um, they do have a couple of ideas where they will be taking some of the powerful sources, you know, they have the uh, life force and have ozone as power, which they know they can't keep them both at once. But thanks to uh, the Legion getting more favour across the galaxy, uh, there's plenty of choices where to go. And um, I think, yeah, this is the Titan planet because it's only thanks to another character later where they're like, hey, hey again, yeah, not this far with the Titan planet, let's go um, to an easier place as well where you can still see them. And then you have um, the Sotras, which are a type of statue race that's definitely been planned in the get go. Um, and yeah, the colour scheme of the green apes, I think that matches the device well enough, and this is also a device that plays a role in book of, of the next book really, including Pod. Let's see the device again, but it does have that relevance. And uh, yeah, so Nicole is you know, pleased with the alliances, um, Kyle earlier is a bit bummed out by, um, because in this stage he's trying to come up with new stuff, but it's struggling to work, I'm not sure if the book is mentioning that or not, but he can still infer that as you know, being scared by the earlier battle because you know, is unable to rely on his own because he's so reliant on others, even when he used to be antisocial. And even Pod turns away here and is also another future hint as well. So, yeah, uh, let's go. Yeah, so once again, the, the blow horn effect with Pod um, used to scare anyone off. And so, um, uh, yeah, so Pod is I missing. Oh my god, I think he's missing eyes. I thought he was blinking. <laughs> Oops, uh, I guess he could be blinking. Uh, but yeah, so Arvin's going out to the open. And yeah, bro, um, sorry, I'm stuttering a bit. Yeah, there's, uh, yeah, I don't think this is said so much in the book at the moment, it just looks like Arvin simply went outside and then he counted these two. But uh, there was this idea because of him struggling with what the new status quo looks like. You know, he's just decided to have a, you know, a bit of a rest, go back to the old days. You know, even Earth is reminiscent of the Legion's first ever trip. And yeah, Earth is the most explored in book one, as you can imagine. <laughs> yeah, the explosion always gets bigger as time goes on. Um, but yeah, that's where they meet Apasmos and the MEQ, um, as established in book two. And yeah, firstly, Apasmos has said it's too big, uh, definitely needs to be smaller, considering that's close meant to be more overshadowing. And once again, Pod is defensive of Arvin, and 
you know, despite him, his peaceful protests, he still would be willing to fight them off for defence. But then Nicole here, considering that more races are you know, friendlier, and in also said in the book, he's a pastimous hero because of what he's like. He's probably made the whole situation worse, and he's still trying to calm it down because I just want a nice discussion, um, which will, yeah, that's pretty much relevant to the next book. Although I say before we go, you can imagine a, a, a I think a brawl would have happened beforehand, before the call came in. I think that used to be a deleted page, but anyway, this time we are going to the next page. <laughs> okay, so I said in the writing, that probably another deleted scene, so the duo, uh, that's what we call the Fasnos and Mickey, they, you know, they talk of the Legion and say, hey, you know, there's this um, upcoming threat tendency, <clears throat> a storm that's developing on another planet, but as the Legion originally planned to put the elements in safer spots all around the galaxy first. Um, yeah, so they let you do that first, considering there is time for the storm. Um, yeah, so as you can see, the story isn't great. I remember yeah, this was the trickiest book to write, because when you look at book one again, there's a really nice midpoint, so yeah, if we, they got a hold of the life force, but the overall goal is still to stop a Pasnos, but no, Orphean, sorry, in the book one. But in here, though, it's like you could still say, oh, you know, it's you know still making the way to the storm, and it's still what is overall being stopped and done. And I can also see that with with one of the villains later on. But even then, it's yeah, the element dropping off. It doesn't have as much relevance as I hoped. If anything, it helps lead into like through to events, which isn't quite good because you want a story to stand on its own. Uh, like even if these books are all you know connecting. And they can't really do without one another, like any other franchise full of sequels. But even then, it should still be a story of its own instead of, you know, foreshadowing other bits and bobs in other books, future sequels. Um, so, yeah, I think that definitely could have been improved. Yeah, it was quite tricky. Um, and yeah, this is the comment from, by the way, um, the shit that's always been idealised. I think even before I created the first figure model, the what would become the awesome atoned, which is, you know, Zami's vehicle. And uh, yeah, you'll see more angles of the ship later on, but it's almost like, you know, one of those spacecrafts, um, you know, with a long body and wings in that manner. Probably even the engines would be similar, and the colour palette's not only matching of the Pasnos, but, uh, you know, of the element overall, uh, the key element in this case. And yeah, despite not seeing Slave Rock just yet, um, yeah, this is yeah, the, what would be the villain um, of this story, but that is something to give us thoughts about when it comes to later parts of the story. And they're arriving to the Hush 2, which is a an ex alien planet, and yeah, you'll see more so later on. So yeah, in the Hush 2, so the guide explains this, um, that it's not a third party material backup, it's just expanding on what's already said, is that, um, uh, well, we already got the idea that, um, well, hopefully, uh, that, you know, a lot of planets have targets on their backs because they're Beings trying to protect the galaxy, they're trying to embody martial arts, but Zion 4 wants to be the only being who wants to, you know, he thinks he should be the only one with martial arts, you know, trying to diminish violence by discouraging other races to fight. And so, as he would be targeting various races, which was also, you know, expanded upon later in this book and the other books, uh, the aliens do put on disguises. Um, these devices here, which uh, are mildly inspired by, you know, the 8 ball, Pure, or yeah, the, the pool game, the, the, I like the, the eight ball, <laughs> and so, um, yeah, the devices is to turn you to another brace, but it's done more holographically, almost, than uh, physically, especially as it would change clothes as well. Uh, I guess you're right, it could have been more interesting, but, yeah, I think this probably would just be simpler to do. Like, if, if this ever gets ad 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 adapted, then, yeah, like, the holographic method would be far easier to transition compared to, like, a proper bio biological physical transformation. But are going on to the scene, so um, because of Imiku's, um influence, which is mentioned, I think is mentioned once or twice in this book, yeah, Pasnos is uh, the kind who will be threatening to get his own way, and so that's what he does here, you know, pop on a really creepy demeanour um, to scare the shop dude here, you know, to get the devices for free. But uh, And I think the currency would be fixed later on, uh, people are not sure how, but... Um, you know, another shop owner could still provide it anyway because it's a pass -nos. Um Yeah, I think that's a gap that could have been filled in. But yeah, Blood's definitely not pleased with this um, threatening attitude, as um, you can imagine. You know, threatening to get your own way. Yeah, definitely not. Uh, but yeah, these in the guide, um, yeah, these creatures, they're mainly a shop owner race. Yeah, trying to repurpose themselves um, instead of uh, battling due to this design for going around. And with that being said, you could argue that, you know, even if the Legion 
are more well known in the universe and the universe is safer at this point. Slightly safer, mind you. But yeah, beings like them still don't want to um yeah, go outside of their original lot quote. Um, you know, this off don't the sorry, they don't want to go out of the occupation they're currently in. And it's also said later on that, that you know, with Nicole trying to find new DJ members and you know, she's not having any numbers as outside of possibly in the personal switch is mentioned a couple of times in this book as well. Um, you know, even there was even another shot of more deleted pages, more of what the outside of this building looks like, even from the wrangle. Uh, yeah, I guess it would have been nice, but you still get the point. It's a store which has these devices. Oh wait, no, hang on, you do see what the outside of it looks like. Yeah, apologies. All right, um, yeah, let's go. I think I just puzzled myself. I'm not sure if um, actually, no, I think this is yeah, definitely the first page before later on, considering a zombie is still as he is, and he can assume that he's still using the device. Uh, probably a bit convenient that he hasn't activated the device yet, which facilitates the following point, that is just an error, which I just spotted just now. Um, oh well, um, so Akron here, here, not seen since book one, still an ally of um, Zion 4. And uh, yeah, and yeah, that does lead to later on. Uh, but yeah, some couple of interesting bits, so this is meant to be an alleyway, uh, that's a ship store. But yeah, the titles of these shops definitely could have been done better. And also all of these, all windows throughout the story should have these lines to create a more reflective effect. But um, yeah, sadly that's not always done, which is that unfortunate. Another detail which I kind of like um, that I've done myself in Nash too, because as it's a slightly more lawless planet, you know, a bit free roaming, there are some races that have done some graffiti. And so thanks to, with the lack of outlines here, it looks, you know, definitely sprayed on and artificial. Yeah, there's uh, crosses on his eyes, so yeah, there's definitely some aliens who are not a fan of Zion 4, as you can imagine. And this guy here, um, who was originally called Cell uh, in the prior version of the story. Uh, so if you remember Spyco in who's his character design issues in the second page of book five, and there was uh, another character as well, uh, actually no, two other characters, uh, a personality changing one, and there's a green alien. Um, the design of the latter, you'll see in book four as well, I can point it out. But it was going to be like a trio of trio of aliens, almost like in Guardians of the Galaxy, how they're their own team, and they join the Avengers, it was going to be a bit like that. But as you can imagine, that does add too much fact to the story. And it was nice when writing the scripts for them. You know, it's an interesting dynamic between both the Legion and within the team itself, and, and even their abilities too. But like I said, it's too much fat. And even this dude here, um, uh, yeah, never been to have pupils. Um, probably a mouth though, but you know, looks like he has the face of a fly. And he, he, always, he has always been small with a frog body. But if you're curious about Cell's abilities, um, you know, he could um, clone himself. And I think he had a thing with goo as well. Yeah, yeah, there you go, another fact. <laughs> uh, and also, not to mention before going on, um, what's also interesting about Eklund's design, so he has a, a blade in front of his face, which makes combat interesting, and also the way his weapon is designed, so you can pretty much latch onto any weapon with, you know, like a gap with his weapon. Um, so it definitely makes sword or staff combat a lot easier if you can move that side in that manner. So, yeah, and, and it's wood as well, hence why it's brown. <laughs> so yeah, let's get going. Yeah, so a couple of things. So firstly, the hash two definitely represents the, the colour scheme of the cube element, which you'll see more of later. And also, uh, I think, oh, yeah, why would they go outside of the device store and then be seen down in alleyway? Yeah, I think maybe at uh, large I was thinking, um, I think the page is meant to be the other way around, but even then that doesn't make sense because, you know, look in, in the new forms. And, um, sorry, I'm in a bit of a pulse of thought at the minute. You could have seen that maybe that was device temporarily glitched, but yeah, I doubt devices this important would ever do that. Um, so yeah, I think the only f f fault I can find is that yeah, we should have had this new design thanks to these devices. And also, if you're wondering what it's carrying here, hopefully that's um, it's shown in other instances, or at least explained. That I'm not too sure, but this briefcase is meant to carry Ozone's power. And and oh yeah, Podio, you can see these rock sacking um, the, the liver gold machine, which you just about can see. It probably could have done with light lines because it just looks like it's just whacked on its back, but. Um, even then, oh well. But yeah, it's clarification. So that's Sammy, MEQ, Pod, Arvin, Nicole, and the Pasmos, which you can refer by similar size features and what the situation is like as well. Because, you know, them two are very close. There's Sammy and MEQ who are having their conversation, which is, I think it's said above. You know, Sammy's like interesting, she's interested in these cubes, you know, considering they can, like these key powers, they can embody any form of matter. And so, yeah, that definitely would interest Sammy. And it definitely pays off later. 
and then you also have a visualization of Nicole turning off um, a bus must as well. But, yeah, really cool idea. I've always had this idea of um, you know, a bus must is similar to Sammy, like he's a show off as well, but he's a bit more of a fearsome one. And so Nicole to like bring him down the peg. Um, yeah, definitely an idea of how to twitch, which you can see bits of here. Um, but yeah, I don't know whether they're oblivious to it. <laughs> oh, well, maybe it's just commonplace, maybe they're distracted by the surroundings. I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so all I can say about the designs is that. Um, yeah, uh, a normal, um, normal influence, you could say, with the pointy nose, which, or tooth, mind you. It's actually a tooth which normals have, and I can see probably more of him later on. Uh, but yeah, this is meant to be a step up, um, like a, a wall. Uh, yeah, probably going to do better, and yeah, you can see what that is. Although, um, and also this is where the devices are gathered from as well. But yeah, these two ships here, um, they pay off later. There's a deleted scene where both Apatmos and Zami they talk about how much they like their ships and they seem to be keen on these two. And there was even going to be an interesting part on how uh, Apatmos is going to be like, hey, you know, Zami, you should be, you know, probably more independently often because I am. To which, as you later find out, Apatmos kind of fibs about that. And I think Zami would kind of learn this lesson um, because both Imiku and even the Sochas later on, um, hopefully this is said as well because I have to say that a lot of times. Um, that um, to have such power, you must have like room in the strength, uh, which is tied to independence. So I think that part um, is hinted there. But yeah, if I wanted to keep any of the pages, I think that one probably would have been a better one to keep. Even these ships used to be in the shipyard, but now they're just parked on buildings, which I think is uh, a nice touch. And to be like other vehicles, they were drawn on 3D and they're drawn on top of. So yeah, let's uh, let's go. Uh, so yeah, more graffiti. Um, Fans of the Legion, which you'll see off see more later on. And then you also still have the idea that Morphils aren't totally accepted. So even if um Pod is uh, you know, more into how he can be a being of his own, he's still been hinted by, you know, how the, the Morphils are being still hated, they're still causing trouble, and he's being accused of what he isn't. So yeah, these are the Titrons by the way, they're also using devices, so that's not their true form. And as you can tell, um, depending what yeah, I think if come with the rules of these devices, I don't think he would look like this every single time you come back and forth. But if it's like the same race together, then yeah, I think that's why the Titans, you know, they, they look this similar in their original form and they are, you know, the same with using the devices here. Sorry, I keep spinning the thing, by the way. <laughs> Apologies for all that. You only see their head in a page later, but you do see way more of them in book form. They're definitely one of my favourite creatures that I've come up with. Even them. Um, the main Titran uh, design, they were just like a, a massive lizard with purple spots, which is a little bit too childish. So they have taken more influences from a Ankylosaurus, which we'll see more, more, see more of later on. Uh, but yeah, something still has the, the briefcase and they're talking about because the Titrans mainly own the life force, but they did send it away. And I think that was explained somewhere, hopefully it is. And uh, but yeah, this conversation is ended by a conflict between the Titrans and the Morphils, which you'll see like, more later on on why them two would clash. It's them who has started this ruckus. In fact, it's uh, Carpo, who, you know, he's the nice one, and then you have Vonda, who's the nasty one. He probably would have started this conversation. And you can also see the power of, um, you know, Bud is trying to charge himself up a bit, and even he's summoned a, a summon divine here. So, yeah, they're nearly batted to his throats, but as also said, and as you can imagine, this whole deal is cut off by this argument, and so, yeah, the Legions have to keep the life force for now. And, yeah, it's not explained what the Titans are doing here. I think that's another cut part where the Titans do like to support um, the, you know, the, this community because there were, well, are, uh, well, no, there used to be Galactic Guardians as well, like the Legion are, which could add like a hint of jealousy between these two. Which also explains later on as well. So I, I keep saying that. Do you have like my list of quotes? And you'll probably be putting down on Tarjan with me. Um, but anyway, um, yeah, uh, yeah. I think I've finished that point. But yeah, this area is also okay. not a shelter because there's no roof here. But it's like an area to sit and possibly eat. Uh, so yeah, no, it's a nice looking sofas. I think it's a missing bit of colour in there. Oh, I know that's Bob's tail. Apologies. But yeah, I think this is the last time I've seen in this manner and. These were designs I did have to come up on the spot, and I'm glad I did, because I did lose this software access of them recently. Uh, other than liking what Apostolos and Nicole looks like, and even Arvin, and that's Amiki, by the way. I do like what he looks like, but Carl and, no, Zami, sorry, Zami Zam, and Pod, yeah, I think they could have been improved. But yeah, I think that's worth debating. Could have been a survey question on their own, but even then, I, I think I've already put on my survey on whichever races or wildlife um, 
have you liked, or just favourite characters in general. Um, sorry, again, distracted by the phone indications. All right, uh, yeah, let's move on. Right, so I'm just putting that uh, back, uh, the laptop back on my lap. Uh, I've got the relic, the lap thing. Sorry, that's a bad joke. So yeah, I'm just putting that back on my lap just now after checking around. Anyway, sorry, no, no filler in this video. I'm sorry. Anyway, so this is what um, Sliver Rock looks like uh, above. Um, yeah, I quite like um, the way he looks, even though his claw-like hand has been inspired by a toy. Um, so yeah, that's why he does have a, a bigger hand. But it's almost like a serpent creature, which I do like that. Sorry. Oh, but yeah, this is the train station, and there's Serviceman, and they see both Mike and Ratron here. Ratron is a sniper user, that's always been the, the get go, but I think he still would have been involved in up close com combat, which you'll see bits of later, but even then, yeah, that's what he is. And it does shoot lasers, by the way, you know, to be more family friendly. Uh, but yeah, as you, yeah, so this is where Slow Rock is trying to find the Legion himself, and he's definitely motivated to do it by his own reasons, which we'll get to later on. But yeah, they're not here, but. Even then, you know, he's still fought off. And then it brings an interesting question, which, um, you know, if the Legion are to be helping other planets compared to Book 1 or 2, you know, where does that leave Earth? You know, just the same old security to which um, your retro could be like, hey, you know, um, if you like this Legion so much, how come they're not around on Earth so often? You know, that's something I can see him saying. Uh, I don't know what Mike is doing here. He's probably meant to be holding the gun. Oops. But yeah, um, the train here, which I kind of like. And it probably could have done with being more busy, actually, but it may have been acrobaticated, could have been... No, it doesn't look like a panda diver. Yeah, God, the time I've had to make this. <laughs> uh, anyway, yeah, let's um, let's get going. Oh, yeah, by the way, these are stairs, by the way, meant to be going up. Um, but yeah, let's go. All right, so this is one of my favourite shots in um, book three. I say your pop still has the living gold machine on him, and Zemi's still with the case. That's kind of neat. And the case is made by him, by the way, hence why uh, the similar colours. And yeah, these two items definitely won't be around after, even before book three is finished. Oh, yeah, this is what the head of the title runs. You know, it's their perspective. They're looking at this fight from afar. Even this is another holiday photo of mine. Uh, yeah, somewhere in France even has mountains and stuff. So yeah, as you can tell, the two definitely varies in various ways. Varies in various ways, what the weird sentence. Anyway, um, yeah, so some trees, pine buildings, but I do like the combat here as well. Um, so as a small spoiler, I've already said this in, in earlier books, so MEQ is a dude called Horrid in actuality, you know, someone who is evil in his own ways. And yeah, I think this could have never been explained, but uh, oh, actually no, um, he's his own side. He, he used to be an ally as I thought, and he just had to go along with helping the Legion, although despite being outside of any knowledge, even its owners, which I, yeah, you can see why I just stuck with him just being a form of evil on his own, you know, which definitely helps vary the villains, because, you know, instead of all of them having armies and being time to time for, we have this guy here who's also on his own, and that definitely helps the twist later on, because what what makes a good twist outside of benefits in the plot and the character and simply switching a subversion of expectations, no, that's a different word, sorry, uh, but it's also adding a, a, a bit of philosophy to it. So, you know, if this twist is happening, what is the meaning of, of this twist? And so instead of, um, so, in this, so in Nicole's mind, you know, we'll go for hers, you know, she would think, oh, you know, everyone is, everyone bad is on Zion Four's side. And, and yeah, I should have, you know, be really eager to have anyone onto the team. But MEQ betraying them later on, or Torrid, also known as Torrid. So, <laughs> um, sorry, sorry if my laughter does sound bad. Um, anyway, but yeah, it definitely would add questions there for her. Um, but yeah, I think like, yeah, I think Zami still has his own time in the story, but as you can see, it's mainly the screen time between these three, even if Zami is almost like the protagonist. And as um, said here and later on, uh, Molog here, he has his book of spells, and yeah, one of them is you know, disarming the devices which reveals the Legion who they are, which, um, uh, yeah, because Ekron didn't see Zami in his other form, uh, unless the Molog just eventually identified a lot to which could have you know made this whole planet attacked and it still kind of does actually later on but you know that's for book five but uh yeah uh good combat um yeah these two keep going at each other with the long range stuff yeah that could have been buried but yeah they're definitely an idea i wanted to have you know that's not managing to intimidate necron and even that carries through in book five as well and then you have mq helping zambi as well which is a nice touch and them to go against one another and i definitely like Pond raised himself in the water like that. You probably can't see because yeah, the water should have been darker or the light should have been lighter. In fact, this colour of the sky is 
used every time to which I didn't admit is that that lazy, but you know, time time itself sucks. <laughs> um but yeah, it's from Ravcon here, probably go and try to go after Pod. And uh yeah, just really nice to use those throughout. But yeah, that's fun. I say a quick fun fact before we go. Um so when the tighter runs used to be just tighter run, it used to be like a bigger Arvin, uh, as in, you know, an animal character who couldn't speak, you know, a bit like Apo you could say, you know, from our child list airbender. Um but yeah, they do end up speaking again thanks to these updates. I say the rise a bit wonky as well. That could have been improved. And yeah, this is another holiday photo of mine. I think this is Whitby, I think, you know, with the town and the lake and the sea here and it's come from this high ground. I think it is, but I'm not certain. But it just adds to the variety of what Nehash 2 is like. You know, definitely yeah, Nehash, Nehash 2 definitely had more exploration compared to other planets, which yeah, I would like to do that future material with the other planets. And you can see the variety of races here. Whether they have devices of their own or that's what they legitimately look like. You never know, Molo could have disarmed a lot. But these are still races that exist. And they were kind of made up on the spot, but a couple I do like. Yeah, one, well, two, three, and four. Yeah, I definitely like those the best. But yeah, that's the crowd, once again, for the Legion. Slightly reminiscent of Book 2 being seen. And oh yeah, the reason they did wear devices in the first place is just so they can focus on the mission. Uh, but because they've been revealed it um it, i guess it does you know update the bad guys where they're at but even then it's still that's not for the public and it's also said um yeah the media does not get any more legion members no volunteers sadly or you know at least you know a few to join but you know it's almost similar to how you know i think the army is cool like the navy the marines etc but i don't want to feel like i have the skill set to join one and I think that's the, the case here. So it's like looking up to your heroes, even if you don't exactly want to be a part of it. And you can also see the hint of the trail with Ibiku here. Is the only one who's not smiling. And even um, Pasnos here is probably wondering, oh, well, I you know, never really had this kind of praise ever. And which does change in later on. A bit like Dion in Book 1, he too undergoes some, some minor changes. Um, but yeah, he's still a side character. And Ibiku, he's definitely... Um, yeah, I think we'll just explore more of it later. But, you know, it, it, that does hint that, you know, he's not truly with the Legion. You know, definitely not matching with what the others are like. Uh, why is Pod angry? Um, I guess, if anything, um, oh, yeah, because as I said later on, the Morphils are still, you know, suffering and stuff, and he's really eager to sort them out, especially as there are less problems going about. But this has been prioritised instead, which doesn't make him happy. But another spoiler, he does leave the Legion and pursue on his own, which also ties with the theme of gaining your own independence. Um, so yeah, an interesting uh, ending to his story book three. Uh, but yeah, let's uh, get going. Although before I go, yeah, this is inspired by otters. I do like them a lot. I did used to have otter characters, almost a bit like Ewoks of a tribal and animalistic kind of made weaponry out of natural material. But eventually, uh, because even he's um, Mimiku or Torrid, he'd he, he gone from being inside a metal suit and then just a blocky creature, but uh, then I just want to be more interesting. And you know, otters are crafty creatures, so yeah, why not have the creatures be more the you know more representative of what the cube element is like and as you can imagine the cube element is more precise what it's like because while other people would have fire water or even life like abilities even the titrans have uh, chronokinesis which is plant manipulation that's a trace of living goal but yeah very few beings have this material manipulation especially come from cues specifically uh but anyway yeah, let's go let's get going Okay, so well, we have um, you know like one of these scenes where it's just focusing just on the villain, and um, and as you can imagine, um, sorry if you can hear air noises, that's just because my lap, that's my laptop's fan. Apologies, um, but anyway, so Slipfrog is out of Earth, and now he's going to um, send his army to another planet to you know join the Legion, and um, yeah, I think he does remain on the ship for the time being because of an event later. Um, Oh, I don't know, because Ekron would have, oh, I know, uh, Ekron would have updated that Legion, have been on that Nash Nash too, but probably going to be moving. And so, and I guess you could say it's a bit convenient that um, Sivrock attacks one of the only planets which the Legion needs to drop off an element. A bit convenient, but even then, um, you know, the Sotras are another fighting race, which they probably wouldn't have gone anyway, but even then, that's still a massive convenience, I would say. I do like the design of this hologram as well. So while Earth is like greener than blue, this is yeah, than green, or, or at least stay like a like a Shrek colour, and I tried to go for that, you know, instead of just actual yellow. If that's too yellow, then, oops, I've contradicted my own um, colour scheme. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I would have liked to see the outside of the ship as well. And, um, but yeah, I think that's it for that part. Anyway, I can see where the polygrams originated from, but even then, that could have looked better. But anyway, on to the next page. Oh, wait, no, hang on. This was also made in 3D and then drawn on 
chop off as well. So yeah, that's another interesting shot. So like uh, Zami, um, the Pasmos is also into his uh, piloting. And uh, how is this 3D? Oh, I'm not sure, but um, you still have um, a chair desk. These are chairs, by the way, which are similar to Pasmos' coat. And then you also have, um, because earlier in the queue was like, hey, you know, Zami, I saw what your effort is like. You can have um, a role with um, this habitator of this cube ability. Um, and yeah, considering like cubes are very, you know, cubes and elements, and it'll still be you know, dangerous, you know, these elements are very powerful at a point where if you touch them, you're dead. And so, but you could say that uh, maybe MQ made them more safe, or maybe it's not been part of, in fact, because later on, like, I guess another spoiler, is that we just get more involved with cubes, and so maybe it's like been embodied in a suit, um, it, because it has been an idealised that throughout this journey, or in any journey, is that we just work on new technology, but that's just, I guess, a bit more headcanon. Oops. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and um, sorry, I just had to quickly go. Um, so yeah, interesting shot as well. You know, spent some tweet. Oh, you know, am I, you know, still going to have fun with Imiku, or am I meant to be more? Um, which is, you know, it's expanded upon later on. Um, yeah, and he's also started with events as well because he's making more of his own choices than of being a, you know, a pet for Imiku almost, which is an interesting uh, swap, you could say, because normally you'd think he's more of a pet figure, but no, it's him. <laughs> and. Uh, yeah, and also this conversation is about, oh, you know, more Legion members is better, right? And then we can, it's about to suggest a counter, which can also be improved. I'll explain in the following page. And the next page is also possibly one of my favourite pages ever, and you'll see why. <coughs> Sorry about that. Um, right, so yeah, fair shot um, of, the, of all the books, I think. Uh, I think most people could agree as well. And um, yeah, so firstly, um, this is the Elemental Wave, where this is Zemion, who is... Dan's great to fight against both Mechador and Orphan here, so he's definitely a good fighter. Even Dan was there. And that's Torrid, he's trying to scheme his way through the battle. Even then, I think the sizing's a bit misbalanced. Maybe like this, you know, this land can't work as the forefront land, but oh well. And then you have, um, so it's then the other creatures, the Sotchers and the Titrons, they're the good guys. And then you have the Niche Bots, Morphils, and the race design for as, um, yeah, the bad guys in the scenario. And this is Ivor's world as well. So I'm for here, the Dolphian, <clears throat> and that's the machine which um, not only will help fully put the elements within, like the Zyphal's, yeah, this is Vata, by the way, who's Zyphal's father, you know, to get um, the elements, you know, fully in the system thanks to the, mach the machine. But well, that's where, you know, millions of planets or races would have been affected by this as well. <clears throat> um, but yeah, so, um, yeah, so MQ, or Tard in this case, yeah, so he's telling the story to, um, and like, I think, yeah, I think that could have been expanded upon um, how uh, you know, the negatives are gaining such a massive alliance, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, I think that's just something that could have been <clears throat> expanded more. So, like, for instance, um, you know, Zemion um, didn't, um, like, get his train his team properly, which could have stopped the tie thing, the whole thing overall, like, stopping the overall process. So yeah, there, there's, there was this one idea of Zemion getting such a big alliance, he'd lose track of them all, and you know, even these, all these good guys don't really uh, get on, um, despite fighting from the same cause. There was that idea, which I think should have been him, because I think it, it would have taught Nicole properly that, you know, you know, big doesn't always mean they're better, that, you know, it's more about abilities and powers, to which um, <clears throat> Vata kind of uses in this case um, to... Oh, sorry, notification going in the way. <laughs> Um, but yeah, like he's able to use independence, make sense of the decisions. I forgot the laser again. Um, yeah, which enabled him to be successful in his own way. But you could say that without the army around him, or enough of a reliable alliance from like these two, which is also not in this book. Um, yeah, that could have you know, made him not that successful despite managing to get a bit of success. Sorry, I'm a bit uh, waffly here. It's just, um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so I think all I have to say is that, you know, I do like the, the combat in here as well. Yeah, definitely some of the better drawings I've done, I think. Oh yeah, that's a, a leaf shield, by the way. <laughs> Probably going to end up better. Anyway, yeah, the stuttering will happen again. Um, but yeah, let's um, get going. Yeah, when I mentioned um, Sivrock's army, and that's what I meant, um, he's formed his own, his own lagoons. So if you remember most of the... Actually, no, I think the rest of the ogres, so those own lagoons um, well, that have more of a name <laughs> um, in the guide. Um, you know, they either all died, you know, fighting for Zyphor's cause, or they decided to leave, um, well, both Zyphor and his owner to live elsewhere, but, you know, that's a deleted page, um, you know, Dion's seen how they're all catching up, but as nice as that sounds, I don't think, uh, yeah, it's not necessarily needed, that's why, 
and if they just have to be deleted. But yeah, this is the Statue Planet, or I used to call it the Statue Planet, because you know these are basically eight foot walking statues, which um, they're going with lava, by the way. Yeah, and I would have liked to put more lava around because the land's a bit too bare outside of structures like this in the parts later on. Uh, but yeah, there was a statue in Scarborough, um, North Bay, you know, um, from the size of him. I just remember thinking, oh, well, we're going to use pretty cool. Let's um, make that into an entire race, and so that's what I've done. And there's also this extra fat in Book 3 where the Legion were going to see some element experts, which would have introduced more of the elements and the foreshadowing of them later on. But then I decided to make many of these the experts of the element, you know, it would make sense with the vault, and even Stephen said later on that they talk about more about the elements, so that's how the Legion become more familiar with the elements from then on onwards. <clears throat> yeah, not the most clear, but at least a line is enough. Yeah, just about the time and the limitations. <laughs> um, yeah, so these two um, are opposite each other, which is kind of interesting because later on they both compare the well, their living core abilities, which is really interesting. It helps bond these characters together. And yeah, like this is a astral clone that Abbasmus does, so as well as temporary invincibility and you know just good skills with the sword, to which yeah he's lifting that guy up by the way. It's um, yeah, he's able to do this as well. A couple of more instances of his powers throughout. Oh yeah, that's Return of Nicole's Pistol as well, that's cool. And a uh, laser blade, almost like a lightsaber, but a bit more of a shape. And so you can see these those only greens are upgraded by, not only by the colour, but they have two staffs which are blood tap ups ends. So yeah, pretty neat thing. Also this one's getting crushed, I find that kind of funny. <laughs> and the last thing, so there's a machine in the sky which is some striking this fella down, you know, that would have made a more powerful lightning strike. And also, you know, thanks to Azuna's upgrade with uh, Zami's electricity, that's, um, you know, able to manipulate lightning in the sky almost, which is, you know, just like a, like, a nice detail, I would say. Uh, but yeah, the Legion helps save these structures, so Silverhawk sent these goons to, you know, to attack the Legion, and so they do that. And Silverhawk will then plan to send more, but you know, that just happens without setup, to which, yeah, I think that could have improved. Sorry if I'm speaking too quietly, by the way. <clears throat> yeah, my voice is slowly going. <laughs> um, yeah, let's uh, move on. Oh, yeah, all there I say before I go. Um, yeah, them two standing side by side just goes to show Abbasmus is following the Cold War. And then this detail, nice detail then. Sorry, I just said niece. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's go. So, this might be in chunky, do you get um, <clears throat> more about um, Slivrock's character? By the way, it's a phone, your generic phone. <laughs> Could have been done better, but you know, I just fancy doing the old design. It kind of makes it look cool with it, almost. And yeah, he's still in the ship. Um, but yeah, in here, so then to have a conversation about, uh, because because of the Legion's massive <clears throat> influence, you know, going from plant to plant and spine of races, that's definitely affected Slivrock's life. And so that makes you know, him to him to be keen to join. No. But yeah, joins Iron Four book against Legion, which is a counter to how Torrid is a single being of his own. But even he wants the Legion out of the way due to reasons later. But Zero so does decide to join Sign in this case, which uh, does, you know, almost add up to the Legion that everyone who's bad is on Zyndal's side, which is only half true. And even Book Five has that minor element as well. <clears throat> but um yeah, I think it just adds like a bit of grey into the black and white that um you know the Legion you know, they're always these heroes, but no, they would have probably done some savouring, which has affected the lives of others, and that's what Silverock is a representation of. So it's a very thin theme, and a nice theme at that, but I think in like, further material that could be expanded upon. I even have, um, like, when it comes to expanding material of this story, I've had this one idea of um, following a bloke who is, like, rather powerful, and is, is asking, like, really interesting questions about how he uses this power and such, and then he comes just, like, leisure along the way, and it would take place, like, years after book five, you know, after this whole story. <laughs> um, so, yeah, them two communicators shown via the speech bubble. Uh, yet, um, yeah, Dion does have some technological, sorry, <laughs> I can't really say that right, but he does take based abilities, which enables communication in that way. Uh, almost kind of established by Nicole Text and him in book two. And this is Dion's clone as well. Uh, yeah, don't see an awful lot of him. The guide does explain more about him, but basically Dion nearly went off the rails, which is also setting up later. But yeah, this is a whole asteroid feel as well. And I think, yeah, I think this is the first time we've seen Dion here. I think um, I was meant to put him in the first page to show how much, you know, how, how much time he has with the Legion, you know, especially as the Legion are going all about in space as well. But yeah, I think I temporarily, uh, no, generally forgot to point him in. Bit of a shame, but once again, I'm being rude. 
Oh, you know, maybe he's off screen, but flying around somewhere <laughs> in the first page. Anyway, now yeah, let's go. So there's poor dynamic between the Vasmos and Arvin. I'm not sure if they... Do they talk about... No, not their abilities. That's definitely the conversation idea. Like both of my head and what I'll probably be doing in the novel version. And I mean, not to mention the size of these guys. You do get more of a idea about them. <laughs> um, but yeah, and that's, yeah, Vasmos is definitely um, being more friendly with these two. You know, which is rather nice for time to chat during a stage where everyone's trying to defend the area. And once again, like, even if it's a mostly blue planet, <laughs> a bit like the show, um, yeah, more jade green, and probably from this conversation, as well as what Sammy's, what's happening with Sammy here, you know, jump back into gaining level of cubes, that definitely worries MQ. Um, and as mentioned, you know, he becomes a traitor later on, and so he's essentially losing who could still help him, as well as seeing that someone else could topple him in terms of um, the knowledge of how to use cubes. And I think that is meant to be a cube, sorry, that's just chopped. <laughs> yeah, it just looks like a rhombus almost. But yeah, they statue here as element experts, you know, that's where they give Zami more hints because the MVQ would have, yeah, and obviously has not fully said, apologies, um, pretty much given Car the cube ability to not just get him quiet, but if Zami is like given a ability he doesn't know, he knows very little about, that always gives MVQ an, an advantage when he has his time to strike. But um, yeah, but that's kind of gone sideways. And I think that's not the best plan, although even though you wouldn't think that these creatures are an expert of these elements, so I don't think MQ would have knew, known that, even if, if all of these were all the way back in the time of the elemental wave, which was um, 100 years ago. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny that my story is like nice and simple, and that's like the only bit of history outside of what happened in the past of these characters. <laughs> yeah, it's just a nice simple story, that's just how it's been. Oh, but yeah, if you wonder about the defences, by the way, so yeah, it's um, Ozona's power is going in this vault, it needs to be opened and transported, and there's the defence, which <clears throat> you'll see a better angle off later. And yeah, Nicole's probably asking for more alliances, or in actuality, um, the writing has definitely missed this one off, unfortunately. So Nicole does eventually you know, see that, you know, these guys are still helping, anyone can help, but they don't have to be a Legion member, or at least give them enough free will um, for what they need to do, but while also seeing that the Legion still have uh, potential with the abilities they have and what they're mixing because it makes them yeah it makes them unique and you know 100 years ago Zemion tried to do that and Blindfall tried to do that and then that probably would have been one of the last instances of racist mixing mixing until um, the data started to come along so yeah it's just an interesting link we could say um, but yeah let's, uh, let's get going I say as I make this recording, I think I'm getting shorter and shorter. <laughs> we'll see what the production's like um, with the other books and know what they're going to be like. I'll be interested. Um, anyway, so, um, yeah, these statues do seem to vary in size. Um, yeah, I think I do prefer them when they have more of a body like this one, but even then, having them vary in some way is quite interesting. And uh, so, yeah, this is um, Asatra getting affected by Zona's power. So yeah, that evidence is uh, by touching a raw element, one of the four ones, then you're done. And then, so, yeah, it, um, so this looks like MBQ's trying to rush everything, which then leads to the mistake and then being told off. But um, but considering the new patrol later on, it's almost like a delay, like trying to expose the element at all. Um, and he's, actually, no, he's not working with Slim Rocky, yeah, it's not part of the story anymore. Yeah, like, there was um, one aspect where Nimiku was going to, like, pay respect to Sivarok, and despite Sivarok dying after the battle later, but, you know, they won't be allied. Um, but even then, um, it's, it's, it's Nimiku just still trying to find um, an opportunity to uh, fight the Legion, and I think he would have waited and wait and see if um, the Legion do fail from Sivarok and his army, but after not being the case, that's where he can do it um, um, when his storm is out, which is getting closer. And I think, um, sorry for the laser again. Um, so, yeah, he has contingencies. Um, and, and I think later on, yeah, in the book, it said that the storm is not too far out from being released because it's a cube storm that's being charged up. And like, while I remember, yeah, none of these battles really show the trouble towards residents, aside from maybe like book, nah, yeah, not well, actually a yeah, book, book four. It's a couple of aspects, but yeah, sadly this doesn't show. Like after Earth having like loaded cubes lying everywhere at the end, um, yeah, it um, yeah, there's no like prior shots of the plants being battered. There would have been deleted scenes, but but just by words, yeah, I think that yeah, it could have been interesting to see what the, the actual damage was like aside from just saying it. But regardless, she's still happy inside the vault, 
you know, thanks to the battle, the element would still be out there, and Slim Rock would be on his way shortly. And uh, I was going to say something else as well. Oh yeah, um, something which is mildly hinted later on in the book, but there was there was this idea where Nicole was like, oh, you know, this is like a massive dud who performed, you know, look at and kicked you out, which is almost like the unironic choice, because if she did that, then that means their betrayal wouldn't have like affected them the, the way it does. Maybe Emmaki would have um, still um, made his way, although if, even then it's the idea that the leader didn't really spot this or stop it well enough, which definitely makes them controversial by the end of book three. And so yeah, there is um, that idea as well, which I think is relevant despite the missing details. But anyway, yeah, let's uh, move on. Yeah, someone else thought about, you know, the statues would have been mad. Uh, no, the Satchers, sorry, yeah, they would have been a bit more mad that one of the statues has died because of the Legion, which I guess is nice foreshadowing once again, but once again, I think the Slim Rock that had to happen almost immediately afterwards, um, which is not only, I, oh, thinking about it, that's a tattoo similar with the Titrans, like, you know, falling around them only to get one over by them, and not to mention that happens again with them in Book 4, so, oh, I've just, I've just repeated some kind of formula. Um... I guess at least the events are different and whereabouts in the story it is, but even then, you know, quick story tip, aside from certain bits and bobs, yeah, don't loot the storylines because I think they could have been picked up upon. I guess you wouldn't have picked up upon if it wasn't for me uh, speaking, but, you know, just, just to be honest about these things. Uh, but anyway, uh, I like the shot as well. You know, you can see the defences are there. The, the elements should have been a bit more exposed. You just have to um, chalk it up as, oh, you know, it's just simply hidden behind there, which, you know, is a bit of a lousy excuse. Yeah, more squishing, you know, he's about to get squashed in between cubes, which is kind of funny. Um, but yeah, one statue solving, one um, Ozonoon, and then the other. And then afterwards, there's still one more lot, which um, is stated later in the book. This is Ozonoon's, no, uh, Pastness's temporary invincibility, which um, he uses against the Ozonoon. I say, I think, I think the letter O is probably the most used, like the character names or whatever. <laughs> um, and yeah, this is um, Zami using combining cubes and lightning, which is not only displayed more of later on, but, you know, really nice mix because what um, despite the limited time what was interesting about Zionville having all the elements is that the abilities can be mixed and not only in fact in fact you, you, you can just see these elements mixing within you know depending on how many abilities a character has <clears throat> and yeah I think the last thing to say is say is how well one thing sure they have the staffs and they would have had more lava like abilities but I think I have failed to use my time to showcase that in a spirit show but at least they you know the glowing outline that's definitely something that makes them stand out and um you yeah, know and I do like this fight between these two as well and despite, despite the teamwork it's um the patrimony defeats um Sid Rock here and like other cases uh, Pod is almost the forefront of these you know villain fights you know, because of how um, because he's definitely the most powerful out of the four but you know he still he needs to help and he's got Marvin there as well which you could say is another dad foreshadowing you know the danger is in and stuff and how isolated he is yeah that's quite interpretive uh, and also like Dan's laser hopefully Nicole's laser is also consistent you know this is because my fours are being dark blue this is almost a laser which is Oh, I can't really say lightning based, but definitely beam based, um, you could say. Um, hence why the dark blue, you know, just the eternal elements having their own, um, you know, colour palette and stuff and the meaning. Uh, almost like how the cube element is about construction and this is all being constructed. <laughs> yeah, it sounds a bit lousy, but anyway, let's um, get going. Okay, so if you remember the structural problems earlier, at least um, the story definitely kicked in uh, a bit more properly. Um, so. Sorry, I lost my train of thought for a second. Uh, and I've still lost it. Oh yeah, so yeah, the cube storm. Um, so yeah, they're definitely on the way to that now. And in both sides of the room, there's some interesting details. There's no Nicole. We could have seen that she's at the back of the ship. But regardless, it yeah, really nice imagery. Because you have Arvin getting annoyed with Zami because, as mentioned, they used to do tech all the time. We would have seen that with the building of the living gold machine. And yeah, so it just further shows how uh, uncomfortable Arvin is with all of these changes and then you have them two talking about each other and talking about how they're going to stop the Morphils at some point and then MQ definitely picks that more up um, more so <laughs> it's like a glut at the end of the tail anyway or have our red nose <laughs> sorry that was a small book about um, <clears throat> uh, but yeah it definitely adds to you know how um, Abasnos is pretty much out of his grass now which is a bit fortunate for him but you know it definitely adds more independence for Abasnos and he's choosing what he would like to do which is shown later, and you know, more bonding between these two as well. And it's also another angle of 
the ship as well, yeah, the comic front, so, yeah, another nice part. Uh, yeah, these sofas are, maybe it's like a decent gap between, like, the, the bottom of the base and then the back of the sofa, which I just suddenly realised. Uh, anyway, yeah, let's go. Okay, so this is the last appearance ever of these Ozone Lagoons, um, especially these upgraded ones. Um, so yeah, a bit to add to the theme of independence, so if I get my laser back on once more, sorry, it's just I've been on enough PowerPoint. Uh, so yeah, Carl has created his own miniature version of the Batone, which would be pretty interesting to see from other angles, but yeah, Carl managed to generate that on his own thanks to the power of cubes, which is proven later on in the story. Something that's actually backed up by later visuals. <laughs> anyway. Uh, sorry. Um, uh, yes, um, yeah, they're more electric, spray, electric lightning spraying, so you can presume that's Kyle, thanks to earlier. And this is also like a minor setup for when it comes to later on in the, in the final battle, like everyone is riding spaceships, because it's almost like your own independent store benefits teamwork, which I think is also quite a nice, unique theme, because in here, the comic front would have been struggling with all of these flying around. And yeah, the serpents are even upgraded as well, or, you know, despite being created by Pacific Rock, there are by the living matter or robotic, but I know maybe blending them both is more interesting. Sorry, just a random idea that's just popped. So yeah, the car doing that, no, Zami doing that would have been kind of neat to do. And you have a sad space as well, still carrying on the colour palette of lime green, not lime green, jade green. Uh, so yeah, and some asteroids as well to boot in. So yeah, this is what summer space looks like. I think this probably has the most uh, stuff out of space. I could be wrong, but yeah, I do. Yeah, book, book three is definitely the cosmic one, or book five, but this is probably a close second, or first, who knows? <laughs> uh, yeah, anyway, let's move on. Alright, so yeah, the betrayal is up, and MQ has everyone, and as you can see later on, because he's better fighting in his own turf, he has the opportunity to let the storm out, the storm's been storing in here. And uh, yeah, it's a uh, much better get away from him as well as a chance to take down the Legion. If not, he has the backup idea. Um, but with um, yeah, with that charged storm, that definitely gives him more an advantage for when fighting alongside this massive plan of his. Because it's like if he's not confident enough to, to face the Legion on their own, to which, yeah, he might want to be aware if they've taken out Orphean and those owner. If he's even aware of that, yeah, he would be. The rooms would have spread. Um, yeah, throughout the galaxy, you know, by the satellites and stuff. And yeah, this is where Apostolos is like, you know, yeah, I'm not going with you, or going to be, in, you know, like your own hand, and I thought we were mates, you know, I'll stay with, with Legion because they're my mates. And so, yeah, pretty good to move with him. And yeah, the Legion will levitate thanks to the cubes being squashed together. And this is Zami's planet again, so it was meant to be one of those planets where it's, it's like chunks in the air, but it's still, if I had this one idea, which is even written in the guide, um, that's still being made, by the way, at this point. So if you like ever fall from a platform, you almost appear on the other part of the world. So yeah, sure, you may, it would get lost, but, uh, and you know, might encounter a chunk along the way, but it's still, it's still an interesting idea. It's almost um, like falling from the Arctic to the Antarctic. Hi. Hi. Ugh, it sucks. Anyway. Yeah, so it's almost like um, playing with that idea. And then he has also has roads and these this is where the storm has been charged, or actually you probably could use multiple of them. So yeah, as Zami's planet, uh, yeah, it would have been power, you know, storing electricity and stuff. And yeah, probably a very, very agile race if they're able to interact through these chunks and blocks, probably would be jumping around. And uh and yeah, similar colour part to oh, sorry. A similar colour part to Zami as well, which definitely makes it you know, quite revealing, you no, know, just, you know, just links between them. And of course, you know, there's no more of Zemi's kind either, which is also quite interesting. It also adds to the independence thing, you know, if there's no more of his kind, then, then yeah, it just goes to show that he might be just used to, you know, keep thriving uh, on his own. It's uh, definitely encouraging. Uh, it's not um, something he's been curious about, probably a little bit, but definitely not the forefront of his mind compared to the books. Maybe it could have been, and he could have been like, oh, you know, I probably would be keen to see my race. That's actually a new idea to literally just come up with. Wow. Storyteller abilities, am I right? <laughs> uh, yeah, let's uh, move on. So yeah, this is um, um, the Torrid escaping. We'll definitely stick to Torrid then, because MQ is, you know, a fake name. This is probably the only time the Cole used his first shield. Uh, a water barrier created by Pod. Um, would have been better if it was ice, but it still defends him. It defends Arvin, Arvin too, which is good. Um, I mean, using uh, lightning, it is lightning too, to tear the cubes, and even the personal shoes and temporary invincibility. Probably trying to go after Torrid as well, because even though that's not a book thing, what I've also thought 
and the novel of, and an idea that I've also thought of is that like while other people would be like really scared to go up against Seinfeld, the person was until later in book three until he gets that trait of his back, he's very up for fighting Seinfeld. They're probably uh yeah, I think I think it's just for his own pride really. Um but yeah, it's definitely kind of hint you know, you can kind of see that in book five, you know, being keen to fight him, but yeah, not as personal, which I think could have been a nice book improvement. And he also goes to show that, you know, he can't, you know, even if he needs independence, uh, which he has, you know, still, well, bits of it, he still needs to work as a team. So it is other characters learning bits and bobs from prior themes as well, compared to these three like, dudes who are, uh, uh, yeah, they've been taught more like throughout the story. And um, because these keys can generate anything, um, maybe this is a spaceship being formed, or this is his way of escaping for now, and he'll be able to create like a spacecraft afterwards. Because if the Zami can do it, so um, Torrid can, uh, although that could have been meta visualized, but yeah, that escapes. No, that is, explains how he's able to travel through space. <coughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, I like this bell shot as well. I do seem to like these fight scenes, or yeah, they seem to be some like. I would argue that they're some of the best drawings, I reckon. Yeah, a lot going on here. I don't know the places, but anyway, let's uh, move on. So when it comes to, like, a midpoint of a, of a story, like an overall story, you would um, do something that kind of ties, almost a way to bridge everything. And so not only, you know, all the Legion have the moment of success and then have a load of failings until they are majorly successful by the end, it's also, you know, getting, um, you know just adding you know, to the story significantly. So, for instance, the elements by this point, aside from, like, book four, uh, we could definitely um, start to see that, uh, you know, it's no coincidence Legion are with... Um, sorry, I'm going to start about the planet <laughs> right next to me. Um, but, yeah, like, all of these energy sources, they're linked to each other. They are an entity of their own. Sorry, turn off a plug. Anyway, and um, and so, yeah, Dion trying to fight um, Zion 4 as well, always trying to get, like, a head start or a chance to stop him while nothing else is going on. Because, I'm not sure if this is stated, but there's a lot less uh, trouble in the universe. And so if, um, yeah, once Dion has had a chance to sort out nearly any, every other ally around, which also explains why Zion 4 is definitely limited later on. Uh, yeah, so, yeah, why not go against uh, the biggest threat around? And, yeah, so it's one of those battles where it's kind of cut short because... Sorry? Um... Uh, because of what happens with the Legion later, and and also exp as explained later, Dark was able to <clears throat> like keep himself uh, hidden um, thanks to keys, which is tad convenient, but it definitely explains a whole uh, bunch of stuff. And not to mention, um, uh, yeah, it's just a, going back to how he's, he could have looked a bit more like a robot, probably like a couple of bits to him. Even his clone that's Liberal made, that's more like a robot, and even this back back of his that's to shoot missiles. And he did, and also like the clone, he used to have wings, but I thought he's more flexible without them. He's able to like zoom around, and he's able to do that because he has like like jet parts all around his body, so he's able to move in all directions instead of just being on like flight mode. Uh, yeah, it makes him a lot more flexible. But yeah, it would have been nice to probably draw those bits actually. Yeah, think about it. Yeah, couple of drawing improvement, and also his missiles linked to him color wise. And this is definitely another dark fortress room as well, and it's. Almost a colour sign for plus the keep element showing up again. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's uh, get going. All right. So the last time we were on Carl's planet, and this is definitely the evidence that uh, Carl is able to use his keeps to, um, you know, create ships. You know, thanks to his own independence, and which is uh, like after the low point, um, and also just like after seeing that Parsons is relied too much on independence, and you know, with his, with you know, with him being the only kind around, plus the statue's advice, yeah, it's able to make. As I made almost like a one man army, and yeah, remember yeah, these two sh ship designs designs in the hash two. Uh, yeah, they come back, but you know more of Kyle's color, which is a neat touch. Even because of the the cubes bombing all over, it's most likely either well, definitely reformed or like repaired, like over the common front. And, and also, this is an awesome tone that's been generated, like an entirely new one. Um, so yeah, these are all generated. This is probably being started from scratch or repaired. Yeah, by the way is um, up for interpretation and you can also see a bit of closure between these two characters there um, kind of hints what's happening later on almost as if Marvin's like the only way Pod is sticking with the team Pod is probably open about that idea and he was open with that's not about probably sorting out the morphil someday um, but I think he's starting to realise that if these problems keep adding up for like the Legion and stuff then he cannot wait that morphils must be sorted and if he has to do it in his own time then he would have to 
And oh yeah, this is Nicole contacting uh, Mike as well um, because as you'll see later on, if I'll save it to get there. So yeah, thanks to Nicole um, telling uh, Mike about oh you know one, one possible ally we thought we made he is about to unleash like a galactic attack and so yeah they'll get Earth's defences up and running and I have to admit this should have been set up earlier as well although I guess the idea kind of is because you know if the aliens were communicating via these satellites Legion have made their own and that's possibly how they have been going from planet to planet but now it's this particular satellite's about to be tempted by Retron who I think it's the first time we've seen him but once again he's taken the chance to get the upper hand um, as they think about it and although in book one um, by possibly a firing Zami, um and and you know the Legion were a solid thing, so it still had a chance to fail. But because the Legion are you know top of the world at the minute, he definitely wants to bring them down for mainly for his own good. Because he, I think he does have a general concern for Earth, but he's almost like putting himself first. That's what makes him almost uh, villainous. But yeah, um, he's going to say to all it, all the aliens that this next danger is the, the Legion's fault. You know, for reasons I've explained earlier, as well as what's said here. So yeah, so this is definitely his fault and um, I think this is uh, well there was a I guess a minor spoiler uh, I don't think it's said in book five but there is this other idea where Retron does admit to like what he's been doing you know with the uh, did he oh yeah did um, I, maybe the Legion were told about Retron releasing the footage in book two uh, I guess, uh, surely and you know it explains why they wouldn't be seeing each other you know eye to eye they probably don't like the sight of one another but you know for Retron to reveal that and alongside other situations he was going to really reveal that in book five to which I think it's a way to show that the Legion are flawed or that he is better or to get the upper hand or maybe he says it during his defeat um, in book five which you'll we'll see later on I know my spoilers I do apologise um, but yeah and also this is not 3D but I managed to do some decent 3 dimensionality in some of these parts uh, yeah and also uh, yeah I do like the crutch he has as well I think that's been resulting well for drawing him uh, but yeah for now yeah let's get going alright so after Dan has been sidetracked by Zion Foy then goes to help Torrid uh, I think this is only minorly stated in this uh, book earlier on that um, I'm saying that um, I, I am sorry for being repetitive um, oh yeah, so there was this uh, one aspect which I think I'll just put in the novel as well. That um, then again, uh, yeah. So if Dion is running out of things to do, then he had the idea to go to get Zion for, but the Legion would have like more. Well, no, they would have um, opposed that because they all need to be all together. And maybe you know Dion still has the idea that um, there are certain things for him to do because no one else is doing them, or he has he still is able. He he is still capable of doing so. Uh, sorry, um, but yeah, I think surely would have learned that, but even then at the moment, you know, he's probably done what he thought it was best, and and you know, even right now he's trying to slow down Torrid and potentially stop him, but as we find out, and as set up by one of the Slivrock scenes, um, yeah, Dion has been hacked, but he just shut himself down uh, via like some emergency mode, which does put him out for the rest of the fight. Uh, yeah, which is still unfortunate, but even then he still see what the hints of what Torrid's world is like, this is the temple, and oh yeah, I think, I'm not sure about this part, but there was other instance, uh, inst instances within this particular world where 3D was used, not just for the building, but the entire area, because of the massive cubes placed as well. And if um, there is like some kind of theory on, oh, you know, do these elements have a distinct or like a representative land, um, this is definitely one for the cube element. The Titrons are for the living gold one, maybe. Uh, and the morphos for fibre, that's arguable, but yeah, I think I just have to explore my own law for that to happen, or, or that to be the case. Um, but yeah, this is Dan, no, Dion splitting a part of a block, by the way, something that could have been uh, drawn better. And not to mention, um, if these cubes are like the embodiment of material, um, as I said in my guide, uh, they are easy to form like this, but they do take a lot of work if forming an entity, you know, like Zami on the ships. But I think it could have been nice to see Torrid um, deal with the parts, but even then he can still tell that he is uh, powerful with these. Um, but yeah, there's also a little indication that's produced in them, so it just looks like he's just throwing them <laughs> like out of his fur or whatever. Um, so yeah, let's uh, get going. Oh yeah, by the way, these some of these cubes float, as well as the ones that are embodied in the ground. Uh, I think this was thanks to a 3D model, uh, you know, being able to um, you know, it's angles of a sphere. Uh, yeah, I don't know which one's which. Yeah, it still looks uh, pretty neat there, definitely. It's uh, 
in a block it like the planet would most likely be. Uh, yeah, I can see that. But yeah, this is the start of um, um, of Torrid releasing cubes everywhere, hitting all sorts of planets. And then there's one, two, three, four spaceships um, around. And uh, if uh, going from me, so Carl is here, Asmus is there, uh, Nicole is there, and Pod is there, and Arvin is probably with either Carl, uh, no, Zami or Pod. Um, yeah, I think that's yet to be planned. That's definitely not written, but it is it's basically they're all have their own ship, which if it works better with the serpent fight, then it definitely would help in this um, <clears throat> uh, scenario as well. You know, being all divided to help protect each other, you know, shoot the cubes and defend each other and make their, their own way in their own time. So, uh, yeah, definitely like the shot. Definitely done in 3D, uh, the, the remaining blocks anyway. <laughs> yeah, this is another shot I really like. Uh, I don't know what Arvid is doing there. There's no abilities from him or anything, which is a tad unfortunate. Although you could say that he's trying to think what could happen next. But um, I'm doing but um as well, sorry. Um, but yeah, I think that's that's an interpretation, but even then I feel like it could be doing something. And you know, still have thoughts at the same time. Uh, but yeah, multiple stuff. So you can tell that um, you know, no wonder if Asnos is, you know, loses his enjoyment to fighting because if he how can he beat Seinfeld if he can't even beat um Torrid here? And because even the book says that no thanks to because Torrid doesn't have like the most flexible body for like martial arts, but all of this cube generation definitely gives him the upper hand and that would definitely be the case here. And not to mention, Pod's been fired at by a load of keys, but caught them using ice, and if that looks like ice. Uh, and also, teamwork time, um, uh, yeah, Zambi generated a block for Nicole to reflect upon, but it's been dodged, and then there were other cubes thrown back at Zambi, and probably Nicole, and so he's tried to zap them to keep in place. So, yeah, I definitely like this action shot a lot, definitely a lot going, going on, rather. <clears throat> yeah, it's, it's good for those with um, a sharp eye, uh, you know, by spotting all of these bits and bobs. Uh, yeah, that's all I'd say. Let's uh, move on. Oh yeah, by the way, this is an example of a 3D shot, and you can also see how the this special temple thing is also designed as well. I'm not sure I said this earlier, but there was a deleted page where before the final battle of the Elemental Wave, there was um, a segment where Zebion and his recently gathered alliances, they were here protecting the Gibe element, which is the last one that and Zionfall get hold of. So they send the forces along, that's where Orphean and Zebion have the Sad realization that they can't go back together anymore. But I've just found out that Zemion's been doing things behind Zion Falls back. Uh, so, yeah, definitely something for, uh, you know, like a spin off or something. But, uh, yeah, you could see bits and bobs of that in, uh, you know, in other instances. But even then, it's just uh, an extra bit of context for what happened um, 100 years ago. Uh, so, yeah, let's get going. Yeah, unfortunately, both this shot alongside another shot, they have very little aside from. The setting, the character, and the element. Yeah, I wish there was like more detail, or even then, you could have had, or I could have had, you know, like maybe the battle going on behind. But I think uh, because as this is a three D shot as well, to try and get, uh, you know, that kind of scale. I think the camera was pointed downwards, so uh, yeah, I don't think would see very little of the fight anyway. But yeah, this is the cube element, and I th yeah, I think it has been there all this time. I don't see how anyone's nabbed it. Maybe if Torrid is able to hide himself or cloak himself using like technology of cubes or whatever then I think he would have probably done the same here and maybe the outside of his world is like solid with cubes sorry I'm making up as I'm going along or you never know it could have been generated in, on Sammy's planet and then taken with him but even then that's just que my own questions that he's answering but yeah even this area you know it has you know the more of the jade greeds again and this was also 3D you know just mashed a load of cubes together which was all to like this, and yeah, it's probably one of my favourite assets. And yeah, there's not many instances where you see the elements on their own, but this is definitely the best presentation of what an element looks like um, on its own. There's this, um, you know, when it comes to uh, a collection of certain powers, I've had this idea that if the cubes, or no, sorry, the elements, if they're living beings, so maybe they can like go from figures to them swapping into the type of energy they are, which explains how they can be absorbed. So you can argue it's that part, but yeah, would be interested to see them as figures as well, you know, what the living versions of these elements look like. I've done it a couple of times, but that's yet to be solid, and probably for other material as well. I think that's been a, another idea when it comes to one of my primary spin-off ideas. It was to, well, I've been having recent ideas to expand on these elements, you know, it's just because they have a lot of potential to be further explored as well. Uh, but yeah, last thing, so yeah, Zami here is, thanks to learn how to use cubes, is able to interact with an actual element, which would mainly damage his suit, but I think it would forget it to some extent as well, and that's 
probably why he's on a service level. And then later on, the person office helps him with, you know, hacking into the cube element. First of all, hack. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, hack's the wrong word, but you know, to still be connecting the element because, as also said, Tyrant, uh, you know, his body is actually quite hard, so he needs breaking, and that's and if the cubes have almost made him up, and they manipulating the cubes, therefore weakens Tyrant's armor, and even his ability as well, which could even answer why he's not been able to like form proper ships like Gazami has. But anyway, uh, although yeah, so could do with. Unless he's like not powering up just yet, that's why there's no blue cubes or any more jade on Zami, but even though it's going to be quite nice on him. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, this is another favourite shot in um, book three and overall. Uh, yeah, so this is meant to be Mechadraw, which I only saw a bit off earlier, and definitely more of in book four. But um, from um, the chats that Bud and the Pastors had on the ship, that's where, um, you know, Tori's just like, oh, this Mechadroid must be, you know, quite fierce and let's try and distract him with that. And it sadly works because, you know, of how much um, Pod ha how much our Pod's life has been affected by Mechadroid. You know, a good majority of it, mind you. Um, yeah, so that's definitely deterred Pod and lost this little battle. So while uh, most of the fight is, you know, it's like a six and one on the ground, but in this case, it's just like power levels at the prime. And uh, you could probably see that they're element versions of the characters. Um, there was um, one idea, as somewhat inspired by Civil War, where it goes from the, <clears throat> the Marvel comics or the film, when the Legion team used to be much bigger, I was splitting them, and when um, one of the Titrans, or Titran as he was just called, um, was you know, a single member himself, there was this idea that um, you know, the Titran would like form a massive plant version of himself, and Pod would form a massive water version of himself, while well, these are the two more powerful characters, and they created like massive giants that caused all sorts of havoc. So this kind of idea is carried on here and when it comes to more complex ideas on how the elements are utilised that would take more time and power that we could have really, uh, had a line hence why being a Zine 4 doesn't do anything silly like this especially as he is a good combatant as well uh, uh, so yeah that does explain that part but yeah then too definitely took the time to do all of this and not to mention this you know all of these are individual cubes were duplicated loads of times on um, PowerPoint and yeah, I think that could have looked better as so over's mecha jaw, but even then this almost mirrors each other, which I really like. It looks more like water compared to other instances, and you could also see Tori up there as well, which I don't think you could see on the video, sadly. But yeah, this is where Pod sadly loses, and you can see him knocked out later on. Uh, so yeah, this is the other shot, which uh, yeah, looks a bit bland, but even then it's a, a nice moment, because as said in the uh, text, uh, Pod is, no, Apostolos is really losing his chance to fight, and this even adds tension later on as Pod's about to get beaten, leaving only Nicole and Armin to take up Torrid, and them two are just trying to weaken Torrid um, from the inside. And yeah, I think uh, Arvin and Pod and Nicole, they would have distracted uh, Torrid enough to not be able to reach the temple. It might have been an idea, but that has some uh, minor logic behind it. But yeah, with the person else having this temporary invincibility, um, while it's not said in the line, it's also like one of those powers where if he holds too long, he will hurt himself, and you can imagine that happening here, and hang on. And uh, another part about um, Apasnos is that in, instead of like using his abilities for fighting all the time, it's also known how to use your abilities for other purposes, and he's managed able to find that some way um, by doing this. So by taking most of the energy off, um, you know, the element, uh, Zami is able to go deeper, which definitely is proven thanks to what Tori looks like afterwards. But yeah, I think better dialogue, no, like better writing and visualization would have definitely, they definitely allowed that. Uh, but yeah, it's just yeah, definitely a nice moment between them two as well, you know, considering what they were like earlier. Well, they didn't have a lot of time together, but it, I would say it's still nice. Just, yeah, it's just sometimes when it comes to big cast, you don't um, always see certain characters with one another. It kind of reminds me in the first Avengers, Thor hardly has any time with. Hawkeye in actuality. So yeah, you're not going to have many instances, um, not your instances of every single character communicating one another. Um, uh, it'll be good to pay that kind of detail, but if not, then yeah, I guess it's no worries. So yeah, a bit of story advice for you. <laughs> uh, yeah. So yeah, the damage to Torrid. Um, it, yeah, she can see him start to crack up. Even the key parts, it, it does first show how he's like made up of cubes and stuff. Uh, yeah, never established, sadly, despite being planned in my head, but yeah, Nicole does have access to explosives and all of them is about to be um, all put um, up, um, you know, all around him, you know, definitely enough to get the job done, because earlier it says that it does need um, a massive amount of force to break him apart, and 
small spoiler, uh, or they we reached this point anyway, Arvin sadly gives his own life. So after a tiny bit of story about how the creature has been unable to cope with change, he does eventually accept in the end, especially with uh, Zami and the Cubes, to which is also in the writing, by the way, but it's not anyway. And so to add to the change, he's willing to give up his own life. And, you know, considering it's been to against him, that is quite impressive. And yeah, we've popped down, like, what else is to be done? You know, this all of this is definitely uh, extremely powerful stuff. And yeah, I've had a lot. He gathered them, he took them. Torrid is not like he's struggled to get them all the way. And so, yeah, he's done. Uh, yeah, which does take part um, um, as well. Um, I say um, Arvin, um, or at least prior versions of the characters, because if you remember, it's the dude in book five, page two, who, you know, used to be part of the Legion. He, did, he was also to have uh, bits of Carl's, no, Zami's technology, almost as if he's an extension of Carl's, Zami's abilities, you know, with the electricity and stuff, you know, being able to fly and shoot extra lightning and other bits and bobs. But I think as I've yeah, it, I would say with drawing time, but just making him just out of him. But after the living or stuff with Book One, I thought, yeah, let's just you know give him like a nice variation, but while also not making him too overpowered. I say, yeah, that's definitely the case here. And also, I've been quite impressed with myself with how the goal is positioned. Nina bended around earlier, and now she's properly coming here. Uh, yeah, I don't know why Arvin did. No, sorry, Tori did more against Pod here, but you know, distractions, I guess. And he's probably annoyed with how damaged he is. Uh, so yeah, let's get on to Arvin's funeral. Yeah, so this is a um, yeah a graveyard on Earth, definitely another location. And I think to improve it, it could do with being reefs or fencing, extra details to these graves. Even Arvin's could have looked better. Uh, but I think what's done here, I think that is kind of nice. And I also like how it's been recently done. And there was to be, you know, like a massive crowd, even like most be there and the servicemen and Metron probably having a glimmer of hope that the Legion are, you know, about to go downhill from there. Uh, you could probably assume that from like the other angle of the area, but yeah, timing would have been diminished. But I still had um, time would have been diminished. No, time would have been limited. That's what I'm going to say. Uh, but yeah, you can infer that from the other side. So yeah, those are some ideas I've had. And, and even in book five, uh, I guess another spoiler, Mike becomes the next person who's dead. There was a scene of them two visiting his grave, which is not far from Arvin's. Uh, and not to mention, like, other deaths that's been caused on Earth as well, in which these could even represent alongside what happens with, you know, prior fights and future battles, which definitely adds to the Legion's temporary fail fails. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, yeah, I think I have to like write that as a line, or probably not include it at all. But far, which is a bit of a shame because yeah, it'll be really nice to see you know them two see um, Mike before going on what could have been their last ever mission if they you know didn't live to see how uh, well just lost against the um, thingy overall. Uh, yeah, design for sorry. Um, but yeah, like if we're looking at expressions, them two would have been close. Pod's definitely the most devastated, and even Arvin would have been a tad gutted. Um, he could have been more gutted here, I would say. Um, but yeah, I think that's what I have to say about this seed. So definitely one of the more sadder seeds. You wouldn't expect um, one of the Legion members to go. Uh, not if I was even reading this book first, I'm sure I wouldn't have I guess that, to be honest. But, you know, that's just another minor mature thing. You know, it could be like losing a pet or just a close one in general. Uh, yeah, just something, something which is, uh, yeah, definitely you know, an interesting topic to share with. Uh, family audience, you know, definitely a worthwhile topic at that. Uh, and also, not to mention, this is definitely like the first step in the Legion style, or which is definitely more so the case in the funding book. And so, with Retron getting the upper hand, and with the president um, giving him another chance in uh, book two, uh, well, that you would infer, because sadly, there's been no lines to back that up. And also, not to mention, there has been a couple of cases like throughout all five books where instead of uh, black outlines, it's been like a darker version of another colour which sadly you know kind of spoils the consistent imagery but at least you can still tell that the residence here this is definitely his room thanks to what books do establish even if it's a bit um, close up and yeah you can tell this is a letter this is Retron's idea so you can definitely tell by this point that he's trying to hinder the legion and you're like okay so if he just wants to get the high ground again how he's going to do that well he has a, a neat plan which is someone in action in book four and oh yeah um think about Retron, he was to have grey hair and a the red dead eye. But you know, red doesn't exist in my book. <laughs> um, so I could love other colours like yellow and purple and even orange. And <clears throat> sorry. <clears throat> uh 
and uh, yeah, and I thought by making him bold, it makes him almost like parallel with Mike as well. But even then, I think it could be nice with her to make Mike stand out more as the only bold human in the entire book. Uh, so yeah, this is like one of those moments where it's you know caps off the book in an interesting way. Even Retron's like, hey, you know, Resident, all of this destruction is Legion's fault. You know, if you give me an upper hand, I won't fail uh, for like the Legion have. But it turns out in book four, spoiler alert, they both kind of fail, unfortunately. Um, and yeah, I think even Retron does get, um, you know, some kind of loss of position, which is, you know, would have been a bit unfortunate for him. Uh, and the Legion, mind you. Uh, so yeah, an interesting cliffhanger for the final book. I think that's definitely a good strong point for book three, despite how weak it is. And I think despite rereads and the improvements compared to what the following books have been like, I want to say that this might still be the weakest book with the, with not just how much is going on, but yeah, like the structure as well. I think some people might agree if looking back on this. And I too have attempted my own survey. I did it as a test, but I still put book three is the weakest and book four is the strongest and you'll probably see more that way. But you know, that's yet to be debated more the entire quality of these books as well. And uh, yeah, I guess only the only thing I'd say is that um, both Nicole and Mike, they wear, you know, like body armour above their suits and even elbow knee guards, but both the president and retro was dressed quite smartly with medals and butters and collars, but you know, once again, time got in the way. <laughs> anyway, let's go on to the final page. So, like I said, um, yeah, even though we don't see the battle, we still see the aftermath, and yeah, I think that could have looked worse, but we can still tell that Earth has been affected by, you know, the battle of some sort. And if you're wondering, hey, you know, what about this colour color scheme? Well, this is similar to the coal skin colour, so I can probably, yeah, I, I would include that as more of a colour within the book as well. Like in a reoccurring one, even if it's not in the forefront, a bit like brown and grey and black and white. So yeah, these are like secondary colours compared to what's primarily used. Although sadly, a restricted colour scheme or just restricted time or the knowledge of the software in general, uh, I think this could have been like a really nice sunset moment. It's got a bit more detailed, even the water. But yeah, sadly, um, yeah, it just looks, uh, it, it's not bad, but it could have looked a hell of a lot better because I always wanted Zami to have a moment on his own, you know, show his independence, to show you that even if everyone's like crumbling around him, he can have some time to himself. He doesn't need to rely on anyone, especially with being one of the Legion's uh, biggest um, trailers as well. You know, sit across the beach, you know, it's uh, it's relatable and yeah, it's almost like something that everyone would have ne ever done, really, as you know, compared to what yours used to be like in book one. So, yeah, it's definitely an interesting idea that he's able to do something that's not something to do with gadgets. It would have reminded him of Marvin as well. So, yeah, I can see why he would avoid to do that. And not to mention both the Pasmos and Pod that leave Earth. Pasmos is not interested in fighting anymore and he probably isn't too keen on the Legion. And if, you know, Nicole's been quite obsessed with keeping these Legion members, she's now lost three Legion members, poor lass. Um, or four members? Yeah, we're tired, yeah, that doesn't make it four, so that makes everything even worse. And not to mention, the universe won't be keen on the Legion either, so, oh my god, this is this is probably the most effective cliffhanger in the entire five books. Even book four, as interesting as it is, this is this book three ending has way more questions going on ahead some more so afterwards <laughs> well not excited but yeah it's the comment from by the way of the stemmies to side and so yeah he has two awesome tones his readily made one and he also formed another one you know earlier and oh yeah just one more thing this is yet another photo this was from the lake district um one walk i've been to yeah a shot i like this is was it in borrowdale definitely in keswick somewhere uh but yeah just helped with the kind of scenery you wanted and yeah, this takes it to the end of uh, book three. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed these videos. Sorry for the delays and the head cannon, the reinterpretation of Scrobbling, the making up in the novel you know, language. Just um, all of that. As you can tell, these videos aren't scripted. And once again, I had to do these efficiently before I got busier. Um, because, uh, yeah, I'm still finishing the law guide. I want to get, get the novel started. I've got other things going on as well and and the, for those who are interested um there are as i as uh, after these videos there are a couple of more like montage videos and a couple of other ones i still have but even then i will still indicate uh another massive youtube break um so yeah it's just a quick update anyway but i'll let you go uh, thanks for watching and we're on to the, ne uh, the next book which will be my favorite